you have a long history in the Premier League where you have managed Brighton and Hove Albion in their derby game against Crystal Palace. You also played for Tottenham Hotspur in the North London derby. Can you maybe explain to us what is the main differences between playing and managing in these high intensity games? Well, first they are totally different. No, One is simple, North London. Uh, history, the one between Brighton and Palace, uh, it took me a little bit of reading to mm -hmm. understand why the rivality from yeah. <laughs> South London to, to the coast, to the South Coast. But then you understand. I think, I think when you play, uh, the emotions, uh, the adrenaline runs a little bit higher. Yeah. Uh, and I'm going to make you an example. Um, I'm going to try to explain to you maybe the, the same kind of results. I drew one game a Palace with Brighton. Uh, and you live like, okay, you know, we had the chance to win, but we were there. So you, your feelings are really stern at what happened during the game. On the other hand, I was lucky to score an equalized goal in the 92nd minute in a mm. game at uh, White Hart Lane, 1-1. Yeah. And like, I, I promise you, this is proper, true. Two hours later, maybe I was in the M25 driving home. Mm. And I was still feeling the, <laughs> the reaction of the fans for the goal. You know, the shivering, the, the shivering, like, a, because it, is, it really massive, that derby. And, and even not losing, it was very important. So um, I think as, as a player, you can also uh, show your passion a little bit more than a, as a coach. Yeah. As a coach, you know, sometimes you need to control yourself and maintain, the, if you can. Calm, <laughs> but but definitely uh, the best games to play. Derbies are, are the best. Finals, semi-finals, and derbies for sure. If we look at the, one of your other former teams, Chelsea, um, as a Chelsea legend, do you believe that your old side is still in the, the title race this season, with how well other teams are playing? Oh, this is a very good question because uh, I'm end of November. My answer would be simple as this. Yes, yeah. I do. Bam. Mm. Now, uh, difficult. Difficult. Yeah. You know, I think the next next game at Man City will define that. Okay. You know, uh, I, I think that Man City was better than Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. I mm -hmm. remember that game. Uh, they control it completely. Uh, but Chelsea recovered after that result. But then in December... You know, incredibly, they didn't lose. Chelsea didn't lose, but they drew too many games yeah. during the time that Man City was still winning. So I think it's a very, very important game. Okay. Uh, probably we say if, if Chelsea lose against Man City, uh, Chelsea could be out of the race. I know in football anything can happen, but yeah. I would say it become really difficult. We're talking about probably winning all the rest of the games, you know, like 15 in a row. Yeah. It can happen. It did happen two years ago, no? When they went mm. Man City and Liverpool, like ten or eleven games and beating the last, yeah. and beating, no, winning. Uh, but um, massive game, yeah. absolutely. And and I'm convinced that Chase should be, should be uh, competing for the league. Uh, and I and I will explain that. When Liverpool won the Champions League, the next year they went on to do very well in the Premier League, and yeah. they won it. I think it's the following year meaning that uh, they kind of improve. And Chelsea, after winning the Champions League and spending, you know, on, on Lukaku especially, you will expect them to be close or winning the, the Premier League, no doubt. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. So what, are, what, are, what are your feelings on Chelsea in the FA Cup? They did very well against a poor Tottenham side last week and there's the second leg today. Uh, is this something you think they're going to go all the way and beat either Liverpool or Arsenal in the final? Or do you, I, you know? I, think, I think normally, like I always, as a player, the same, you know, mm -hmm. uh, first get in there. Yeah. And then when you're in the final, you know, depending on the position, you have a chance. Um, I, I would like to say that the difference between the two teams in the first leg, it was important. Mm -hmm. I, I was lucky to be in the stadium. Uh, uh, something was missing as Spurs and uh, they really need it for tonight. They really, I mean, they need to go to another level. Uh, probably the first goal is going to be very important. 
you know, that kind of change of mentality and and it brings one team up and the other team a little bit under pressure. Yeah. But uh, I, I agree with Conte at the moment. To go to that level, uh, and there is a, a difference between the two teams, you know, between the two squads. Yeah, definitely. Um, if we circle back to Chelsea, um, how do you feel about Thomas Tuchel? How do you feel about he? How has he dealt with the whole Lukaku situation? And would you have handled it any differently if you were the manager? Well, f- first, it's difficult from outside mm-hmm. because we we don't know all the all the, the the issues and all the information from inside. I, I make an example. I, I I read a lot about people saying, wow, "Why did Lukaku didn't go and lock mm-hmm. knocking his door and talk to him?" Maybe he did. Yeah, we don't know. So so it's very difficult to talk about without knowing. Yeah. Uh, what what I I would like to say, and, and again, uh, I'm not gonna get in into the discussion what is good, what is bad is mm. I heard the whole interview in Italian. Yeah. Okay. Lukaku was trying very hard, speaking in another language, yeah. an Italian, to be very nice to Inter the Milan fans. Mm. He was trying to explain himself why he didn't say bye when he left. He was trying trying to explain why he was so close to them. He was trying, kind of trying to gain back that relationship that he had. Mm-hmm. And he tried so hard that he went over the top. <laughs> you know what they say? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because so of this, and because of that, and because of this. And, and he was probably having the feeling, mm, not enough. And mm-hmm. another one, and another one. And he finished saying, I miss you. I want to go back. <laughs> but it was all because he was trying to be very, very nice to them. Yeah. So you need to put in yourself in that situation. Uh, I think I think it was more clever and more important how they hold the interview to the moment that they put it out. Mm. That was very clever from the Italians uh, because he made a really noise. And then it, it depends on, on your character and your relationship with the players. Uh, you know, we are all different. Yeah, definitely. And 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 I think that the, I heard so many things. You know, like it's gonna be deal indoors and and you know inside the club, and then mm. everything was out, <laughs> and everybody knew when it was a meeting, and everybody knew after the meeting what happened. And so uh, I, I would say it was it was a big problem one day, and after the Liverpool game two days later, it was like it was nothing. Yeah, Off which it was needed. It was needed. Mm-hmm. You know. Especially when you pay 89 million for a player, <laughs> yeah, you need to, to keep in house. But it, um, my my you know information for the for the fans is they don't imagine how many things that happen every week inside the club. You don't imagine. No, no. It's it's, it's incredible, it's amazing. We we manage it, we're dealing with so many things. If everything come out like this, <laughs> It would be a nightmare. <laughs> we will be out of the job after two weeks. Uh, but uh, yeah, this one went a little bit too much, you know, yeah. too far. Yeah. All right. Uh, another Chelsea player uh, currently getting a lot of attention is uh, Antonio Rudiger. He's going to be out of a contract in the summer and the clubs are circling around trying to get his signature. Do you think Chelsea should try to keep him or maybe cash in? Already and sell him here in January, or what do you think? Well, in, in this in this kind of situations, I got a very. I think I'm one of one of the few. <laughs> I got an, yeah, I got a, I got a strong opinion. Mm. Uh, when you sign a contract between player and club for a co- quantity of years, yeah, that's the, that's the deal. Yeah, let's not try in the middle or six months before the end of the deal, or nine months before the end of the deal, to try to change the rules of mm. a contract that we agree, we sign, we shake hands, mm-hmm. and it's that. So I was a kind of player, and, and it happened to me twice in Zaragoza. Mm-hmm. I have a four-year contract, and I finished the contract. Yeah. And then I renew okay. another three years. Yeah. And then I finished my contract, and I came to Chelsea. Okay? Yeah. Meaning, meaning... I signed four years. I play for you four years to yeah. the last minute of the last day, you know, and that's my relationship with you. And I would like the club to have the same way. The problem is, it's all about money. Yeah. And when the money gets involved, 
we forget about something that we agreed three, four, five years ago. And I, I would like from both sides, and listen, eh, this is very important, from both sides, player side and club side, to respect the contract to the end of the contract, both ways, and not start thinking about other things. Because if now the club wants to cash in and say, okay, maybe in January we sell it, mm -hmm. now they are like thinking about the money and not the team. The team needs Rudy. Yeah. Now, to the end of the season. Yeah. Very important player, and it's in the contract. You have an agreement. Why are you going to be thinking on changing now? Now, I understand the money side. But the same way, then the player can go and say, I'm not going now. I'm staying at the end of the season when I'm going to be free. Yeah. And then it's always the player, the bad one. Is it? Yeah? yeah? If he doesn't renew, he doesn't play anymore. Mm. If he doesn't sign a new contract, I'm putting with the second team. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's always, uh, if he's not good enough, uh, we don't want him. Now you must go because you will never play again and your career will be. We sign a contract. Both sides, I'm talking about both. Yeah. yeah. They should respect the contract to them. Mm. They have an agreement before to extend it. Great for both. Yeah. They don't just play until the last minute. Now, you as a player, you need to show that you are, you know, yeah. there. And I yeah. think Rudy, Rudy is doing that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we saw his tackle against Brighton two weeks ago, you know, putting himself into the 50-50. So still very committed. I, I wouldn't be too to worry about. And uh, I think that if I was Rudiger. I will keep playing to the end of my contract. And if I was Chelsea, I would play him until the last minute, last yeah. game. Okay. With that commitment. Eh? Yeah. So when his, if he stays until the end of the contract and is looking to leave, maybe looking towards another team or another league, where do you think he would fit in? What, where do you think he should, uh, should look I, to go? I think it's uh, very personal. You yeah. know, uh, when I was little uh, in South America, it was, it was all about Real Madrid. Hmm. Ah, and the best team in the world is Real Madrid. Then, obviously, we, we had a Barcelona of Guardiola that we yeah. all got in love. So, <laughs> Barcelona. And then you go the, the English team. So, so I, th I think it's very, very personal. But uh, which is easy for him. Hmm. It's, what we say in Spanish, he's going to have plenty of girlfriends, you know? Yeah. <laughs> he's going to be able to choose. So, he's in a, he's in a situation where... Uh, he's going to have plenty of opportunities and uh, he will decide with his family what is best for him. Okay, so you don't think he's best fit for it, like English football where it's a bit harder tackling and stuff like uh, that? I, th I, th I think he had uh, bad times and good times. Yeah. So that, that will influence his, uh, his decision. You know, he had a, a bad time on the, on the front Lampard, mm -hmm. not playing. Yeah. And a very good time on the Twitcher. So uh, why not stay? Yeah. You know, maybe we'll get to the end of the, the season and Chelsea is uh, winning the league and maybe you think, I should stay here with this coach, playing week in, week out with a big contract. Because remember that if you, if you want to sign Rudiger in the middle of his contract, you will have to pay nowadays yeah. 40, 50 million. So that if, you, if you take half of that and you put it on top of the contract, he's go. And you, uh, you know, you've saved half signing another player, and you know someone you know him. Okay, the age will get into play, and and what the manager wants. But sometimes, you know, is I, I like when you know the player. Yeah, I really, like I really like because you know the character, you know the reaction, you know what he's gonna give you. So let's wait and see. Okay. Um, another guy at playing at Chelsea is the American Christian Pulisic. In your opinion, how do you think he fits in at Chelsea? Well, I think I think that uh, there is a problem about the talks, which is very simple for me. But uh, uh, you know, in football, normally we talk about problems, discussions, money, transfers, uh, players, uh, interviews like Lukaku, and, and we forget the most important part, which is the football side. Mm -hmm. um, Ch Chelsea is playing a system where the wingers they got a massive problem. Because they two play wide is two fullbacks or wingbacks. Yeah. Uh, so either the the the, the wingers, no, Hosodoy, mm -hmm. Pulisic, uh, Saic, you know, all these type of players, they adapt to themselves to a wingback position, or they adapt themselves to play a little bit more in field yeah. as a second striker. Meaning that you are not playing in your best position. Yeah. It's a problem. Yeah, it is. 
a problem for him, it's a problem for Hosodoy. For me, Hosodoy and Pulis is they are wingers, wingers that they can get in diagonal, that they can deliver, they can go past 1v1, mm. that they can get in the box as well. And, and we saw them this year playing a lot, wing back, or just inside, you know, in, in a three. Uh, that is not for everyone. No. You know, some, some people will adapt and get the best of them anyway. And some people will suffer and not give you, you know, the best. Where, where do you want to see Pulisic most of the time? In the last 30 years, 1v1. Yeah. Um, even against uh, that game that Solia was there at Brighton, he was playing wing back. So you see him going backwards a lot and defending in their own box. So it's, it's a different situation. But that happens when you have certain characteristics of players and uh, the best system for the coach or for the team is, is a different one to your ability. And then you find yourself in a, in a strange situation. So if you ask me, I would like to see policy twice. Yeah. You know, in a proper 4-3-3. And yeah. I'm not talking about this Chelsea because this Chelsea system is different. But uh, I think that way he will give you the, the best of them. Is there, is there any clubs you can think of that place that kind of system where he would fit into? Where would you well, like there, to see him? There is many. There is yeah. many. Yeah, there is many. And I, I think, I mean, uh, he's, he's still an, an important player, but I'm sure that depending on how you know, long he's going to be is not going to be playing, so it's not going to be playing his best position. Mm. So that is when the decisions uh, you need to, to find out or to keep improving in that. Who knows? Yeah. Maybe in three months' time, I'm talking to you and saying, by the way, policy is very good as a win back. Yeah, yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. All right. Um, if we, you mentioned him earlier yourself uh, at Spurs there's Antonio Conte what do you make of his start to the season and do you think a top four would be a successful season for Tottenham Hotspur this year if you finish top four it's going to be amazing yeah. no doubt 100% sure uh, I'm I'm pleased what I say two months ago when he got the job mm. I read it yesterday and today in the press uh, Antonio is going to tell you how it is yeah which is white is white and where it's black is black. It's not going to go around. It's not going to be politically correct. It's not going to try. He said that the team is not good enough to compete against the top teams and he wants better players. Yeah. Then you give me better players, easier. You don't give me, I keep working. And that's the truth. Now, people doesn't like that, especially nowadays that we're living in a world that you cannot say the truth. Uh, so I knew it. I say that. And I said as well, the ones that are not up for it, the ones, the players that they won't be there, mm-hmm. they're going to be out. A hundred percent, not 50 50, a hundred. And you're going to see now in January, they're going to be plays out for sure. Because that's the way that he managed and he's been successful everywhere. And yeah. if he changed the way he managed, it's not Antonio Conte. And you need Antonio Conte to get Spurs better. Yeah. And if you back him, I'm not saying back him with crazy money, back him in a, in a way that, for example, characteristics of the players that he wants, if you can find them, I think he will finish top four, no doubt. Is there any players you can think of that would fit into his way of thinking, you know, being well, there? Uh, the problem with this is that there's too many rumors about what he wants, mm. uh, but I'm not 100% sure if that is truth, you okay. know? For example, everybody, every year, every season that we talk about Spurs, we talk about a number nine that he can play with Harry Kane is not there. Mm-hmm. Uh, he doesn't assist that player. Everybody would like to have an unbelievable number nine, but you're not going to play, mate. You're going to sit on the bench until Harry Kane is tired <laughs> or injured. I mean, it's, it's not. I'm, I'm, and Tottenham try many. Eh? Yeah. Jensen... <laughs> Soldado, so many. But at the end of the day, they leave because they want to play. So that position, I already made my opinion. Then I, I don't really know what he's looking for. Mm. I don't. People are talking now about right wing back. I'm not so sure. I think Emerson is there. I, I, I cannot see someone coming in better than him and playing and him moving out. Then you need to sell Doherty as well. Yeah, I think the left wing back is done. Reguilón is going to be playing most of the time. So there is positions that they've been sorted. Now, he probably knows, sorry, it's okay. He probably knows that there is 
one or two positions that he thinks he needs to improve. Mm-hmm. But that only Antonio and, and the sport director and the club knows. Yeah. We, we won't know either because if, if you know, no, because if you say out and loud what you need, those players, they become more expensive. So you need to be clever enough not, not to say <laughs> too much and keep it for yourself. That's why there is so many rumors. No, he want a left center half because of Davis being a left back, not a center half. Somebody said, no, 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 he want a right wing back. No, no, he want a, a striker when Harry Kane is not there. No, no, he wants a center midfielder to play. We don't know. No. I mean, so there has to be two or three, for sure. A hundred percent sure. Okay. Now, the wait and see. Looking ahead to the games this weekend, can you maybe give us some predictions for the three games following your old sides? We have Brighton versus Palace, we have Man City versus Chelsea, and then we have Spurs Arsenal. If we start off with Brighton Palace, what do you expect of that game? Who's going to pull through? I, I, saw, I saw Brighton myself, and I, I really like what I'm seeing. Uh, you know, they, they, can, they can play a game without being in top, top form. And because they got an identity and a way of playing, uh, they can get away with points, which is mm. very, very important, somehow. Uh, and when they play well, most of the time they get points as well. So it's not the type of a, a team that they need to play always in, a, in an incredible manner to win football games. Now, Palace, it will depend on, on the players, how many they are available, uh, well, how strong they are. They were getting better and better. And then uh, they got this COVID situation and a couple of suspensions, you know, Saha got sent off and blah, blah, blah. And then they lost it, no? They needed to get back to, to the comfort zone uh, in, in on the table, I mean, you know, the comfort zone and the training, to get in that position. Although, uh, saying that, it's, it's a derby. And uh, it's, it's something there. It's something going in there, you know? Uh, so it's going to be interesting who, you know, Prepare mentally to play a derby, which you need to be strong and passionate, but at the same time, control the emotions, you know, and don't do nothing silly. But I, I can see Brighton winning this game. Okay. City Chelsea then. That's a, that's a big game. You said it yourself. Key, it's key, a massive game. Yeah. Key game of the season for Chelsea. Massive game for Chelsea. Mm-hmm. Massive. Uh, people will say, oh, it's more important for, uh, you know, 50 50. No, no. This game is really important for Chelsea. It will define. If you're going to be challenging or not. I think losing this game, like I said before, it would be terrible for Chelsea. So I hope they go there and, and they put a performance. Now, what a month, no? Mm. People didn't know that. People, sometimes you think you're doing well. And, and when you look ahead, you say, oh, we're playing Tottenham three times in the same month. We're playing Liverpool at home and we're playing uh, Man City away. It's a month that defines your season, practically. Uh, so, um, w- we need the best Chelsea to get something from this guy. The best Chelsea. And I, I don't know. I hope that Tuchel finds something different. He did something different against uh, Tottenham in the first leg. He played a different kind of system and it worked very well. Maybe he finds a, a, a way to play against this incredible Manchester City. So, but very, very important game for Chelsea. Okay. You cannot make a prediction. You don't, you don't, you don't I, I, I would go with Chelsea 100%, but okay. I mean... <laughs> Uh, it's more a, you know, a wish, yeah. <laughs> a hope, but we'll see. Okay. And then, of course, North London Derby, Spurs, Arsenal. Arsenal are in good shape at the moment. Spurs, maybe not so much. Uh, what, do you, what do you think on this one? Um, yeah, I, I, think, I think Arsenal has is, is been getting better, but I'm still thinking that they have uh, a long way from, from uh, the consistency that, you know, people or Arteta and the club, they would like to have. It's early doors. I think it's, you can see, you know, we, we are very dramatic, you know. Uh, two months ago, two months and a half, Arsenal was not good enough. They were not strong enough. They were too weak, too many problems. And now, oh, they are magnificent. They're going to get in the top four. It's not mm-hmm. one and the other. It's a process that Arteta is doing. He's doing it with young players. The main player is out. It's not, you know, there anymore, the captain, uh, Abu Mayan, and that, that's a big loss. And they need to find a way to to replace him, that, that, that could be a key, you know, situation now in January if they can find someone. Uh, but I'm still thinking that, you know, it's, it's a difference between the two teams in terms of approach to the game with the mentality as well as the manager. So uh, I, I, I will go Spurs because I want Spurs to win this game. But I would say that uh, it, w- it will depend on how 
which of the two teams impose the game. You know, if it's going to be the Conte strong mentality, aggressive, eh, or the control of Arteta and Arsenal. So it will depend on who is better on the day. Okay. Just, uh, just the last bit here. So we talked a bit about it earlier. Um, and it's something I think everybody's interested in knowing your opinion on is where your old clubs need to strengthen in this January window because Spurs, they need better players. Conte has said it and you said yourself, right? And Chelsea may be looking to improve their team and the same for Brighton. In what areas do you think those three teams need to improve in the January window? Brighton, I said it many times and I know it's very difficult, uh, but uh, we, we, we kind of all the support in a certain way Brighton we would like to see this identity, this system, this uh, coaching and player relationship with a top number nine. Yeah. <laughs> Now, nothing to go against Mope. Mope that this year is called plenty of goals. It's nothing against him. It's, a, it's, a, it's about really finding that the play will take you another to another level. And uh, but it's difficult because of the way that they, the recruitment works and, uh, and obviously how expensive those players are. Uh, but that will be probably the main thing that everybody wants to see at Brighton. Chelsea um, is, is, is not about players coming in. It's about the situation with the four defenders finishing contract. Three, sorry, because uh, Thiago Silva extended. Uh, Aspilicueta, Christensen and Rudiger. Uh, it's, it's, it's very unusual, we can say. Uh, a week ago, four players that were finishing contract more or less in the same line and, you know, central defender. Um, Spilicueta can play right wing back, but he's, a, he's been playing most uh, as a center half. And the oldest one, renew first. <laughs> Normally, it's the opposite, not the youngest one, uh, which shows that uh, it's, it's not been easy. So I, I think it, it will depend on what happened with those three. Uh, if Chelsea finds already someone in the long term that they can sign in, in that position, they would probably do it. I, I don't know. Uh, the rest, you know, uh, someone who can play left wing back if Marcos Alonso gets suspended or injured, probably. Yeah, because with the, the wing backs out uh, and with the Ben Chiwell injured for a long time, mm. maybe they will bring someone in there. Uh, yeah. We'll see. The, the only thing I know at the end, Marcos Alonso, Finish playing all the time. I'm pleased for that because I know him. I coach him. You know, they bring full bags, they change the system, they oh no, he cannot play in a four, he cannot play in a, a five. And at the end, left back of Chelsea, Marcos Alonso. So um, I'm, I'm pleased with that decision. And then uh, Spurs, we talk about, I think it's more about what Conte wants. And we don't know, I promise you, we don't. It would be something that we think. Oh, maybe we we'll bring this or that, and then a player will arrive, and you will say, "I was not expecting that position," but there is something that he needs for his game, and uh, he will try to bring it for sure, a hundred percent.